Hi there, and welcome to Raylene Math. In this video, we are going to evaluate these four limits, given some information about the limit on the graph of f and g and h as x approaches negative 1. But before we do that, let's find out what these limits mean to the graphs of f, g, and h around the vertical line of x equal to negative 1. Because the limit value exists, we know that the function is either continuous or has a whole, which is almost continuous. We just don't know about the function value. So if the function value, the height that y is when x is negative 1, if that function value is the same as the limit value of negative 2, and remember, the limit value means the height that y approaches as x approaches negative 1 on the graph of f. Well, that means that the function f is continuous at x equal to negative 1. The function value could be a different value from the limit value, or it could be not defined at all. And in that case, when the function value doesn't equal the limit value, but the limit value exists, we know that the function is almost continuous, and the function has a whole at the x-coordinate comma the y-coordinate of the limit. Okay, now we don't know this to be true in this case for f and g, we're just giving some examples. What we do know that all three limit values exist means that at least the functions are almost continuous and potentially they are continuous. Just like when working with exponents and logarithms and trigonometric functions, the limits have certain rules that apply to them. And these are called the rules or the laws or the identities or the properties of limits. And the algebraic properties of limits hold if the limit as x approaches c of a function, f of x, and also as the limit as x approaches c of a different function, g of x, both exist where c, the x-coordinate, is a constant. The first property then says that the limit of a constant is equal to that constant. And a constant function is just a horizontal line. So let's say this is y equal to 3, and we want x to approach 2 and find out what that limit value is. What height does y approach? Well, as x approaches 2 coming from the left side of the vertical line or coming from the right side of the vertical line, y approaches that constant. And so we have the limit of the constant as x approaches c equals the constant. The second property says that the limit of a sum or difference of two functions is equal to the sum or difference of the limits. And then similarly, in the third product, the third property says that the limit of a product equals the product of the two individual limits. The fourth property says that the limit of a quotient is equal to the quotient of the two individual limits, provided that the denominator is non-zero. If the denominator is zero, then we can express it like this, but then we would end up with some non-zero over zero for the answer, which is in infinite, either positive or negative infinity, or we could have had a zero in the numerator, which is indeterminate. And in the case of indeterminate, uh, we don't know if this is going to exist or not exist yet. Meanwhile, in the case of infinite, the limit value does not exist. So it all depends on what happens in the numerator to be able to see if there's a possibility that the limit could still exist. And this, of course, is the case that we would have in the whole that we talked about earlier. Three more properties of limits. The limit of a constant times a function is equal to the constant times the limit of the function. This constant is just a vertical scaling of the graph, and so you can either vertically scale the graph before you take the limit or after. This limit of a power of a function, um, this property says that you can swap the order of raising the function f of x to an exponent and performing the limit. So right now we perform the exponent first on the base of f of x and then take the limit, but we can swap the order of doing so by taking the limit first and then raising to an exponent. And the same is true for a composition of any outer function that's not even just raising to an exponent. We can swap the order of the function and the limit. Now let's apply these to a couple different cases. So for the first example, we can apply the properties of limits by distributing the limit through the subtraction and we take the limit as x approaches negative 1 of 3 times f of x minus the limit as x approaches negative 1 of g of x. And we can also apply the property that allows us to take a constant in front of the limit. This is just a vertical scaling. And we can see that 3 times the limit and the limit of 3 times the function value will be the same, or 3 times the or vertical scaling, if you will, of the function. And now we just substitute our given information. We have 3 times negative 2 minus 4, which gives us negative 10. And so on this new graph, if you wanted to think of this as a new function k of x, 
because the limit exists on the graph of k of x as x approaches negative 1, then the k of x graph is either continuous if the function value k of negative 1 is also equal to negative 10, or almost continuous, having a hole. In the next case, applying the limit properties, we can swap the order of the operations. This says to take the g of x function, cube it, and then apply the limit. And we can swap those. So we can apply the limit first and perform the cubing second. And in this way, we can directly substitute the value of the expression limit as x approaches negative 1 on the g of x function for our given information. And we get that y approaches a height of 64 on the graph of the g of x all cubed function. In the next case, if we attempt to apply the property of limits for a quotient of two functions, we would take the limit of the top divided by the limit of the bottom function, but we'll have a problem here because the denominator has a value of 0. And so giving a value of 4 over 0 is a value that doesn't exist. In other words, if we were to take this g of x over h of x function, we're saying that it has a discontinuity. Um, so we know that there's a problem with 0 in the denominator and this limit does not exist. Specifically, whenever we have non-zero over zero, this is an infinite value, and so we know that this graph would be having uh, a vertical asymptote. We just don't know if that vertical asymptote height that y approaches is either negative infinity or positive infinity. And without a sign chart or a graph or more details about the algebra, the best we can say is that the limit does not exist. Lastly, for this function, we can swap the order again of the outer composition function, the square root and the limit, as long as the limit, when we rearrange it, exists. So in the last case, the limit didn't exist, and so performing the quotient rule for the property of limits doesn't work because the limit doesn't exist. In this case, we have the limit as x approaches negative 1 of negative times f of x, and that negative coefficient can come in front of the limit, and we can substitute the limit as x approaches negative 1 on the graph of f of x with negative 2. So we get the square root of negative times negative 2, which is the square root of 2, which is a real root, and so the limit exists. So there you have it, a few calculations involving some other properties of limits. If you like the video, click like, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for checking out Raylene Math.